Okay, so now we're in Renoise and I want to show you quite a wild way to create some more crazy style dub effects in here. And what we're going to do is actually start with this time stretch effects template. Now I'll make these all available in a sample pack I'm doing for this project, all of these patches, but I have this time stretch effects template and this is basically some trickery I've done in the phrase editor where you can load any bit of audio into this, this sample section here and then I've already mapped out all these phrases to give you these Akai style. Stretching effects and that's just doing it to a drum break there and then I can flip through these. different sections, but of course I can actually drag any audio that I want in here. So if I just go into my sample library, actually what I could even do is just change what I have in here. So say I just wanted to do that as stretching to just a snare, I could delete all the rest of that crap off and then go back into this uh, phrase editor. And now I'm just stretching, I'm doing the same stretching effect, but now over a really small sample, so you're gonna get very different sounding effects. And you can literally drag anything in here and do lots of cool stuff. So I think it might be worth very briefly recapping how this technique actually works. And what it is, is re-triggering the slice loads of times at different points along this ruler. And we, we do that with the SSX command. So I can put in a note here and this is just a amen snare. And then I just, if I hit um, S in this column, I bring up the SSX command. So the easiest way to probably put this in is just to do the step drum feature where I can press command one to set the step drum to being one. And then I can just hold down, um, hold, hold on, go to this column. And I can hold down the snare sample. So now I've got all these snares re-triggering. And now that's just like a snare roll, but if I actually wanted to do this time stretch effects, what I've got to do is go to this bottom one and I could set this to be the last, F0 is there, so FF is gonna be the last thing on this ruler. And then I can select between both of these and interpolate. I think people before, you, if you watch some of my earlier tutorials, I did one where I, what I like to do is kind of trigger the um, effect in this main editor here. So just have it triggering. And then I would come into the phrase editor and actually play with the, the lines per beat value live. And then you can also play with the semitone pitch live as well. And they're really cool. And so what I would actually do is get my handy little audio editor here and I'm actually using another audio interface with like a separate output of my mixer now. So you can see here how it records everything. So once you just hit the recording on that, you can kind of just forget and leave it. But one thing that's really annoying is because this semitones button is quite close to the top of the screen, you can't really do that much good dragging because you kind of get stuck at the top of the screen here. And another thing is you can't actually map this lines per beat value by default, but I've come up with quite a clever strategy to kind of get around these problems. And that's what I'm gonna show you today. So what I did to start with actually, I've got to remember a little bit what I did in my workflow, but the easy one to do is mapping pitch. So let's just do that first. And I'm putting this back to naught semitone. So what I'm gonna do is come into modulation and into pitch, and then I'm just gonna jack up this pitch range to like 48 maybe just to give me a lot of a, a higher range. And then I'm gonna assign pitch to a macro. Um, and so now I have a macro, which I can use for doing the pitching, which is way easier than fiddling with this control here. So that's got us around that problem. And I can actually bring that into this main window. If I type in ints macros, I can actually bring it so I can see it in this window and I can automate it and do all kinds of stuff there. But the actual problem we have is that how do I modulate the lines per beat value in the phrase editor? Well, there is actually a way you can do this. And what you've got to do is go, I think it's called ints MIDI control. Yeah. So in Renoise, if you send program messages to a instrument, it's actually gonna change the phrase number. And to do this, I come into here and I go to set this one to program. So now this one is sending program messages and then I just need to turn it on. 
And now if you see, if I just put this on like number three, uh, that's on one. If I put it on number four, it's going to go to number four. If I say put this on number two and come back, it's going to be on number two. Okay, so the next step in making this all work is actually to come to this phrase editor and I want to make it so that I can sweep from like one up to the, like a higher value in this program change. At the moment, I've only got five um, phrases, different types of phrases in here. So what I'm actually going to do is just delete a couple of these off and I'm going to go with maybe 128 is a good one to go with. And so let's just delete all of these things off and just have this basic 128 and then I'm going to set this to lines per beat value one and then I'm gonna start duplicating them and actually going up through the lines per beat value every time and you, I think before I did about 80 of these so I'll catch you back in a second when I've raced through all of these and created 80 new phrases all with different lines per beat values. Okay, so now I have all of these different phrases all go going up from one to 80 in lines per beat and this is gonna mean now I have all these kind of crazy stretching things I can use by changing this program function. And so what we're gonna start doing actually is mapping these to this MIDI controller now. And if I just actually go to like a new, let's go to this empty one. Um, let's go MIDI map and I'm gonna map this uh, program message to the first fader on my MIDI controller and then just map pitch to the second. And one other thing I forgot to actually mention is when I was mapping this program change out, I actually went from min one to max 80. And the reason I've done that is because uh, actually sending program message naught will turn off the phrase editor. So if you have it on one and 80, you can play with this control a little bit better where it's gonna max out at the, cause I only did, did these up to number 80. It's gonna max it out to 80. And then at one, it's still gonna be playing the phrase editor. So you can hear there, you can get some really, really cool effects, even just messing with the pitch and the program change. And I've just got a very basic snare drum in there, so I haven't even changed the source material up yet. And I'm already getting some really cool sounds. But to take this to the next level, I think I wanna add some delays and some more cool stuff that I can modulate here in this macro section. So that's probably enough actually to do and really the delays are going to be what's going to make this sound the coolest and then I can come back here and I've got all of this stuff that I can now also map to my MIDI controller. just instantly like loads of rises and cool effects and they sound a bit wacky there but if you start to isolate them down into their own individual hits you know to take them this is how I would kind of always work I can put little markers in here and just have these individual so that's really cool if I went and actually went in here and I could reverse this sample And I don't even want that like, bit there. And then this program's so good for doing little edits, I can put a little fade in. Maybe that even, even that's a little bit too much there. Maybe that just fades like that. Yeah, so that's really the fundamentals of this technique is to modulate the actual phrase number with program messages and then also just to modulate pitch and delay and all these other stuff and just a mess with like re-triggering the notes and creating all these crazy effects. But this kind of takes me on to my next point is that actually I'm just using a snare here. I was just using a snare to create those effects but if I come into uh, my audio editor here and I actually come to these all these dub effects. These are really cool for throwing in and then just resampling uh, these dub effects. So now I've got this dub effect in, what I might do is actually put this on a, a forwards loop. And 
That's crazy down there. It's real laser beam territory. Whoa. So that is just like it. I've just created another like 15 effects from one dub leap. And if I chuck another one in, um, you can just see how creative this all gets. One cool thing that's actually worth mentioning here is how cool this technique works with vocal samples. And I've got this kind of classic jungle vocal sample here. What the time you have the dread? 12 o'clock natty. Which I'm sure you've all heard. And it actually kind of reveals how this technique's working a little bit. So obviously we can pitch this vocal sample up and down. What the time you have the dread? But then actually by changing the program message, we can speed up and slow down how quickly the vocal sample is playing. And you can get those kind of crazy Akai style stretch sample effects. which can give you some kind of weird results, but I think it's really interesting actually, and there's definitely some cool sound design stuff that can happen here. Anyway, I thought that was a cool technique that was definitely worth showing you as a way to progress that time stretching technique that I think I did a tutorial on maybe like a year ago now. And at the crux of it, it's really about getting set up with this loopback recording. So any creative stuff you do in any of your doors on your computer, you can just record the output. And if you think about it, it'd be so hard to like automate all this stuff happening per step in Renoise. It'd be an absolute nightmare if possible at all. And you would just never get as good results as just doing it all live. And it's not nearly as fun. So getting yourself a MIDI controller and getting that loopback recording really helps you be creative with techniques like this. Okay, so I'm just in a little demo project here and I just want to show you how fun it can be to just jam out with some of these dub leaps and effects over the top of a track. And all I've got set up here is some delay, a reverb, and I've got an EQ here which is working more like a filter, just pulling out some low end. And then I'm also modulating again the pitch of this instrument, so just kind of doing more of that resampling re stuff again. And I've loaded up loads of dub leaps in here and I'm also messing with loop points a little bit just to kind of create some more fun stuff happening. Yeah. <laughs> 